Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John Coleman and I get to speak with Dr. Liz about all things that can help improve our health. Yes, health, healthy, healthy eating. Dr. Liz, for the last couple of uh, visits, we've been talking about food and antioxidants and um, all kinds of uh, uh, great stuff that affects mm. our health, not strictly medical stuff. But I, when I, I, be, I have become a label reader. Hmm. Um, so when I go to the store, or even if my wife has bought it, I pick up and I'm, I'm constantly comparing now, um, uh, the, the ingredients and those, you know, that label percentage label, um, for different things. I, I, of course, I don't know what I'm looking at. I just look at the calories and then I look at the sodium cause I know too much sodium isn't good for me. Right. Um, but other than that, I'm not sure. You know about this daily percentage, and the and I, I know they list the ingredients. The first ingredients is the thing they have most, which mm. is usually yes. corn syrup. <laughs> That's right. So uh, you know, and then it's the everything else they list is sodium benzoate or some you know chemical names that I That's have right. no idea. Well, how do how do you really know um, how to read a label, a food label? That's a, 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 an extremely good question. And I, I like this topic. There's a particular author who our uh, listeners may have heard of named Michael Pollan. He wrote a book called Food Rules. This is my copy of the book. As you can see, it's pretty, it's from a while ago. And I will tell you, let's see, when did he first publish? 2009. So this book's been around a little while. And the bottom line of this book that Michael Pollan says is eat food mostly plants, not too much. Those are his three categories. Well, and then, he made it easy, didn't he? He made it really easy. And each page is a little short discussion of one. So I want to say a couple of things from what I've learned from Michael Pollan to what you've brought up. First of all, if, if we're looking at a food with a label, we're already off to a questionable start. Apple, really? If you're eating something that doesn't have a label, you're eating real food. Interesting. That's you're the eating an apple. I thought. You're having an apple. You're having a tomato. You're having a carrot. Yeah, you got something you're from the produce it. department. It's either produce That's department right. or smash ball kit made out of plastic. Both of those, <laughs> neither one of them have right? labels. Right, all the little yeah. kid toys. That's right. right. Exactly. And one of the one of the little one pages that he has in here is food that your great grandmother would recognize as actual food. Mm. <laughs> Okay, wow. so, so I think he was the first person to suggest that. I also think he, if I think about it, he's the first person or who the person who led a lot of us to think about the fact that you want to stick to the outside of the grocery store. So, John, I'm imagining you looking at these labels and comparing labels. That's really only necessary in the middle of the store. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's where all the packaged that's true. Foods, that's where the packaged foods are. That yes. is where we are having to compare one processed food with another processed food. Yes. All right. And so less of that around. Now, the, of course, the marketers have figured that out. Okay. When I go to the grocery store and I'm over by the strawberries, they've got those little short cakes and the goo yeah. to make the strawberry short cake dessert. <laughs> it's all kind of put together. So, you know, there are smart marketers that have figured this out. But generally speaking, the produce, uh, egg, the single item foods, okay, meats, uh, dairy products, that type of thing. Oh, another one that's a trick that's on the outside of the store, on the edge of the store, is over by dairy. There are tubes of yogurt that are in like plastic, and it's supposed to be for kids to be more healthy and eat yogurt and have sort of a sugary, well, unfortunately, it is a sugary processed treat as opposed to uh, a real, actual, unsweetened yogurt product. Mm. All right, so there's some tricks. There's some trickery going on around the edge of the store. Again, with terms of a label, so we're talking about looking at the label. If it has one ingredient, you're probably okay. Like milk. Yeah. Almond milk has almonds. 
If it says almonds and water, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. If it's an almond beverage and you start to have, you mentioned uh, the different, the sodium benzoate and all these kinds of, oh, another one that's in here is if a third grader can pronounce all of the ingredients, then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, I've, uh, there's been plenty that's been written, I'm sure it's in that book as well, uh, that, um, uh, they uh, manufacturers even play with splitting up the names of various sugars and things like that, so that they can split them apart. And then, if it's a, under a certain percentage, they don't even have to put it on the label. But when you add them all together, they, they're probably overloaded with various kinds of things that are not good for you. So, can you talk yeah, a little bit about, about that? About how we can get less tricked by these tricky labels that have lobbyists who have figured out ways to hide stuff? What are the kind of things people are hiding? Oh my goodness, Art, they're hiding a lot, unfortunately. I compare this to the cigarette industry from the early 60s and even before then, where they there are food scientists who are dedicated to inventing ingredients that cause processed foods to be more addictive. There is wow. a reason, and it's not personal weakness, that if I hand somebody an entire bag of some weird color, strange processed chip kind of food, food like, I, I call it, I call it not real food. I don't call it junk food. I you mean things like ch Cheetos with a red Cheetos, Pringles, uh, Ore these, Oreos, these types of things. Oreos, very invented, highly, highly processed. One of you already mentioned high fructose corn syrup. Our bodies do not process it well. I want to say to the point of the food label that we want to look for those first three ingredients. Yeah. Now, this is also to your point, Art, when you were talking about that they're breaking apart molecules so that they don't even have to list them. Sometimes they just list them, but under different words. All right. There's a, over a dozen different ways to describe sugar. Yeah. But nonetheless, it is still sugar. Also, sugar is sugar. <laughs> and we have to be sure that we don't have too much. Mm. All right. Yeah. So as, as I always say, if you made it yourself and you didn't put sugar in it, that's about the only way nowadays that you can be sure there's no sugar added. Okay. So we have to be careful. Uh, sauces, uh, salad dressings. He mentions that in his book, foods that originally didn't contain sugar. I don't need to add sugar to my oil and balsamic vinegar salad dressing, but sugar is a preservative. And so if I bought it in the store, it's most likely gonna have sugar added both to increase the taste, to increase the addictiveness and to increase the shelf life. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, the labels, you know, all you can, anytime there's a new requirement to do something, there's going to be a long list of people who are figuring out how to get around it. That's right. Um, so the, while the labels can be very good and very informative, I think most people have the problem I have. I don't know what I'm reading, you know? So this has been very That's right. helpful. That's right. If you can find an alternative that has ingredients that you can easily read, or best of all, is it doesn't have a label. Right. I like that. We would you, like uh, uh, let's give another shameless plug for was it Ma Michael Pollan? Would you hold up his book again? Food Rules. It's a classic. Food Rules. Michael Food Pollan. Rules. We'll Michael see that Pollan. that's written. We'll see that that's written in the uh, description down below, and uh, people can find that or uh, a little, uh, little small article. Book. I'm sure there are articles yep. online on Google as well. Uh, oh yes, you'll find. he's written other very long books, but I I like short books. But I think <laughs> but I think that uh, something which I agree with is if it doesn't have a label, uh, and assuming it's not a child's toy. It's probably okay. Uh, right. Again, you know, eating in 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 uh, uh, legitimate quantities. Uh, yes. And um, uh, the fewer things that it has on the label, probably the better off you are. Anyway, so Grandma yes. Nup Grandma Nupes. That's right. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.